Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker betting show. I'm your host, George Ellick, and this is a St. Ledger preview. Uh, we're going to be previewing all the Raid Days racing at Doncaster on Saturday, on St. Ledger Day. And I'm joined by Odds Checker's very own tipster, Andy Holding. Andy, it's been a long time since you and I have sat down to chat through a day's racing. How have the last few weeks been going for you? Yeah, it's a, been a long time in, in relation to our podcast. We, we seem to be doing one every week, didn't we? I know, I know, in the height of summer, but it's, Kept yeah, busy. To have, yeah, to have <laughs> three or four weeks off is a, is a little bit of a luxury. Um, yeah, okay. I'd, I'd say August into September has been a bit of a struggle. Um, I think the whole summer has been a bit of a struggle for one reason or another. I'm looking back, funny enough, I was looking back at my profit and loss column, uh, which I updated um, yesterday, and I was minus minus eleven points in August, which is not great. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um and that, and that's i think the third time this year I've, I've had a minus um not saying i've had them before i've had minus columns way before but to have sort of three out of the six the eight the eight months so far in minus is uh is a little bit concerning really yeah I, I, whether i've just got to book my ideas up or, or i don't know i don't i'm only just slightly off i mean it's not like massive losses and i'm still up on the year i think about 70 points on the year but i've got in my mind now, I've got four months to really crack on and try and turn it around. Um, so hopefully I can I can do that. But yeah, for some reason, yeah, August just fell apart towards the end. I was doing all right. And then that last couple of weeks before I had a bit of a break, just, yeah, just never, never couldn't get, couldn't get any traction. Well, Andy, as we know, it's always darkest before the dawn. So um, hopefully now September is going to be a cracking month for you. And you said we had a couple of weeks off. We're doing this today and then we're doing the Irish uh, ledger preview tomorrow as well. So like London buses, you wait a few weeks for one and two coming along at once. Uh, great to be back chatting to you, just the two of us. So we're going to rattle through yep. it all pretty quickly. Uh, before we get into the racing, just going to point as ever the listeners and the viewers in the direction of the odds checker app do download it now we're going to be talking today in terms of the very best prices on the day's racing the best place terms bookie offers and all sorts as well including the best tipsters in the game including andy himself so make sure you check that out uh, andy we're not going to talk about friday's racing at doncaster but you told me before recording that you've got three that are probably going to be going up if the prices hold on your column tomorrow morning so make sure you do check that out if you want to hear andy's thoughts on friday's racing um before we kick off though what are we expecting in terms of the conditions you know it's been a baking hot few days for most of the country over the last week or so with a bit of rain forecast to come over the weekend do we expect the ground to be easing by the time we get to saturday do we think the, the rain is going to strike donny that's what i thought when i was looking uh, in advance at this meeting george yeah so Sunday, Monday, when the decks came through, and I thought, well, okay, how's the rest of the week going to pan out? Is there any value bets I can have? Trying to predict it ahead of schedule um, if there is going to be any showers and any particular going changes. Um, Doncaster, as we speak on Thursday lunchtime, I've had one millimetre of rain from the first day to the second day. The jockeys all said it was riding fast. Um, a lot of the time times were very quick. A lot of them were below standard or very... Uh, close to standard. Uh, even the slowly run races weren't weren't that bad um, in relation to the to the over you know the um, course records. Uh, and there was a course record with Cardam who won the five furlong race. So it just shows you how quick it is. The one millimeter will just disappear. The, the the clock of the course actually came on ITR as I was watching the program this morning. He said he's actually going to put between three and five mil on today as we speak to, after mm -hmm. racing if they don't get any more rain. The forecast is for maybe the odd rogue shower tomorrow, but a lot of it's passed through, and certainly Doncaster, where it's situated, is not expected to get anything in any large quantities. So Friday, I'm, I'm going to base all my calculations on, on quickest ground, and it looks like that's not going to change too much going into the weekend. So I'd imagine that, that, that at the absolute worst, the, the, the ledge will be run on good, good to firm in places, I would have thought. At the very worst, good to firm in places for the ledger on Saturday. And now we're going to go into our first race preview. It's the 145, the Portland Handicap, and Hurricane Ivor is the 7-1 to one favourite, ahead of Digital at 10-1, to one, Jawal 11-1, to one, uh, where the deal is done 12-1, to one, just another bottle 12-1, to one, as a stone of destiny, 14-1 uh, to one bar. Uh, we're recording this at about 20 past 12 on Thursday. So final decks, 48-hour decks just in, markets just reforming, 22 run in the Portland Handicap. And Andy, who do you fancy to go well here? Well, I'll just put a, um, a few stats out there to start off before I get on to the main fancies. Um, 
first and foremost, the draw. In the last uh, 10 years, since 2011, all Portland handicap winners have been drawn high. Last year, 18 of 21, Stone of Destiny. Uh, 14 of 22 the year before. Then 18, 22, 12, 10, 15, 12, 21, 15, respectively, all mm. the way down to 2011. So, just based on that, you'd, you'd be a little bit concerned if you if you fancy the favourite, uh, Hurricane Ivor, who ran probably the most eye-catching race of, of the preeminent trial, if you like, for the for the Portland. That race at York that was won by Copper Knight. Um, mm-hmm. the, the race has already worked out well. Um, um, Mondemej, who finished fourth, went on to win at Haydock last weekend. It looked a deep race because uh, Twilight Calls, horse I quite like, was sixth. And, and um, when the dealing's done and won at Goodwood and beat Twilight Calls, could only manage tenth. Uh, the time figure was exceptionally good. Um, Copper Knight himself, the winner, went on to run well in that aforementioned race at Haydock behind Mondemej. So Hurricane Ivers finishing effort in finishing third and a night catching one at that left you to believe that he could repeat Muthmere's success in this race for William Haggis a few years back when he defied nine stone seven. Uh, similarly, Hurricane Ivan's got to carry nine stone ten uh, in, in the Portland on the weekend. As I said, the only problem is a draw. Uh, and most of the pace, the, the quick horses, the pacier horses, such as Copper Knight, are all drawn towards the near side. So I'd be looking towards the near side, double figure draw um, for, for, my, for my likely bet here. I do think also called Jawala run really well here. Um, he's got a great record. Here at Doncaster, he likes fast ground, which he's sure to get. I think he's fairly exposed in the sense the handicap has got him where he wants him, off a rating of 99. I don't think there's much wiggle room there, but he's likely to run his race more than most. Um, he hasn't got too much to find me Copper Knight and, and Hurricane Ivor from the, from the York run. And as I said, shifting his overall profile to Doncaster and laying that out as a template for... Uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the possibility of him having a vantage of racing at a track where he's gone well before. He could easily turn the form around with uh, those that beat him uh, on the Naismire. I certainly think you've got to give Mondemej a big chance. I think he's got the perfect run style for this race. I. E. He's often slowly away, but he comes through with a rattle after travelling well in his race. His five furlongs have sometimes been a little bit too sharp for him, and he's always been doing his best work at the end. So five and a half is absolutely bang on the button for him. Um, and the other one I'd probably throw into the mix as well um, would be when the dealing's done. Um, a horse of of, of uh, Roger Teals, who for one reason or another just didn't run up to his best on the Naismar. But the Naismar is a funny place, isn't it, York? That that ground there mm. often prevents horses from running up to their best. Uh, and he was drawn high as well. He never really got into the into the figure two of the race. So I think he's he's worth a mention. But at this very moment in time, looking at the race, looking at the draw, where the pace is. Uh, and given the, the career stats and, and um, what you're looking for with regards to Portland winners, as regards run styles, I think Mondemej and Jawal in and around the 10, 11 to 1 mark, a couple of like each way bets with five, six places. I don't think that, that'll be too too far away from the, the way I'm looking at approaching this race. Yeah, Jawal, 11 to 1 best price with William Hill, who are currently going six places, sticking their neck out there. The only firm going six places as it stands. I'm sure more will follow suit in the next couple of days. Joel both wins this season coming at Doncaster. Um, on Demege, 14 to 1 best price. That's with Paddy's Betfair Sportsbook, uh, Bet Victor and Paramatch. All of those firms, 5 to 1, uh, a fifth, the five. Uh, on then to the Champagne Stakes, just four runners here. And Reach for the Moon is the four to five favourite uh, ahead of... I mean, this is where using odds checker is, is crucial. You've got four to five most firms. Uh, Betfred go eight to 15. Most firms around about the six to four mark for LaSalle. Betfred go three to one. So Betfred really sticking their neck out there and taking a view on the champagne stakes. Uh, Bayside Boy, 15 to two. Twilight Jet, 20 to one. Andy, do you reckon that eight to 15, three to one will be still be around in, in a couple of hours when this goes out? Um, three to one. Who's got it right? Yeah, they've so they've they've gone short on reach for the moon and, and stand out Lucille. Yeah. Well, there's just no no way in a million years that Lucille's a three to one chance on form, is it? <laughs> he's he's got the best form coming into this race, hasn't he? I've been a big uh, advocate of, of Richard Hannon's Colt, as you know, throughout the mm-hmm. season. I've put him up a few times on on podcasts, and he's he's bailed, bailed me out of a bit of a hole on more than one one or two times. So, uh, big big respect for Lucille. It, it's it's a difficult one because I've also got a huge amount of time for, for Reach for the Moon as well. I mean, when he won at Sandown the other day, he, cl- he clocked a, a decent number. Not, not a time that has 
in, in any way endangering what Lou has already achieved. But I think over seven furlongs and beyond, let's say, if I'm looking at a horse who I think is going to be a, a, a guinea's horse for next season, right here, right now, or even further, even a derby horse, I, I'd, I'd certainly be looking towards Reach for the Moon um, to be the better of the two. Um, but as I said, right at this very moment in time, Lou Sal has clocked two f- fantastic time figures. First and foremost, uh, when he won at Newmark, he won the July Stakes. I've, I've gone on record to say uh, that that was probably one of the best races so far this season from a juvenile perspective. The form has worked out exceptionally well. And um, he was a big drifter, wasn't he, at York? I, I think I put mm. him up at was it five to two in the morning. He went off seven to two. And I think I think he was about 5.1, 5.2 on the exchange on the bell, which it was one of those races where I kept scratching my head thinking, I'm, I'm looking at this race wrong. Have I got it this got, wrong? It, yeah. It got me kind of really anxious. I don't normally get that preoccupied with too many pre-race markets. But ev- with everything that was telling me, got, got instinct right-wise, that uh, I think me and Rory both said this horse should be a six to four shot. We, we mm. thought he'd go the other way. And he went completely wonky in the market. Uh, and, and they backed everything else apart from me. You know, there's money for Giza Sub and, and Fear B. And uh, it, like I say, it, it left you sort of second guessing yourself. But to be fair to Richard Hannon's goal, he, he came to the, the table again and and once again clocked an, another good time. He's done a nine, two 92s back to back, 92 at Newmarket, 92 speed figure. And these are our speed figures, by the way, uh, at um, at York. And if you look at Reach for the Moon's best time so far, it's an 88. So if you're just looking at this race on pure form, what, what the horses have beaten, regardless of potential or going forward, right here, right now, Lou Sale should be favourite on what he's achieved here and now. Uh, so that three to one is definitely the wrong price. I think sort of four to five, six to four is more how they're likely to bet on the day. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think I'd be prepared to write, because like I'm doing this podcast now, you can still get in another few hours once it goes out up on, 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 um, on, on the public domain, then, then fill your boots because there's no way he'll be that price. Whether he's good enough to beat Re- Reach to the Moon over an extra furlong remains to be seen because, like I say, I do think uh, Jonathan Eddie Gosling's charge is, is a special talent as well. Uh, so it's a shame Teddy cut up to four runners. Um, notwithstanding Bayside, boys got a lot of potential as well. But it does look between the front two in the market. But I'll, I'll be I'll be flying the flag for Lou Sale, um, and I'm, I'm hoping he can um, continue to prove the doubters wrong. Let's say. Yeah, Betfred certainly that. I've been onto their site whilst you were talking there, Andy, to make sure it wasn't a glitch, make sure it was actually exists, and it is there um, at, the, at the time of recording. Three to one about the sale. Six to four market price, uh, reach for the moon, four to five best price. That is with Paddy Power, Betfair, Sportsbook, Bet Victor, and Boyle Sports. Uh, if you want to go that way, but Andy, certainly, I don't know if we can claim that as a three to one tip, uh, given, <laughs> given where it is in the market, but either way, Andy, as he says, flying the flag for Lucille. Uh, the th- uh, third race we're going to be previewing, the fourth race on the card is the three o'clock at Doncaster, the Kazoo Park Stakes. And here we have Lana Cash at 13 to 8, Dania 5, uh, 5 to 2, Glorious Journey 11 to 4, Dubai 9 to 1, and then Rhythm Master and Oh This Is Us, both 20 to 1. So six runners here uh, with yeah, Lana Cash, the, or Lane Cash, the, uh, the favourite, Andy. Um, another kind of trappy affair with three at the top end. Who do you reckon looks like the value at this stage? Um... I think he's great value, Lancash. He was five to two anti post favourite. Uh, I looked at back in him. I think on Monday when when the when the original prices were, were chalked up, uh, and I thought, well, mm, I'm am I going to beat the book by a huge amount? I, I thought, well, you know, if there's going to be eight, nine, ten runners, he, he might be two to one the day. I'll, I'll prepare to see what the ground's like because he's only bad run in his life came in heavy ground in the Horace Hill last season. So mm. with a forecast, I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just stand stand off of him for now, but. As it stands, we're looking at racing tomorrow uh, Saturday on, on Goodish Ground at worst. And he just ticks every box. Uh, his performance last time out in um, a Group 2 race at um, um, Newbury, the, the Hungerford Stakes, pound for pound was one of the best time figures that we, we've got so far this season. Um, I actually got in touch with um, William Haggis Jr., um, Sam Haggis, to say that... Mm. Um, do you realise what kind of fi- figure your filly ran in that um, seven furlong contest? And um, he was quite astonished by my, my, my assessments. He was like, "Really?" I said, "Really?" Yeah, yeah. I said, "This this filly's as as good as what we've seen over that trip for a long, long time." So straight away you're thinking, "Well, let, let's see how the race pans out." And we've had two horses that have come out of the race. 
Um, one of them, Nanda Parado, who made the running in the in the Haydock Park Sprint, was was wasn't probably a true guide. But the first real proper proper horse with substance to come out of it was um, Al Suhail, who finished mm. sixth, got beat six lengths, and he made mincemeat of his two rivals um, at Haydock last week, clocking a very fast time figure in the, into the process. So straight away that race that was won by Sacred is already beginning to take shape. So the fact that Lancashire is the only horse out of that 10-strong field to offer any resistance to uh, William Haggis's filly, uh, and, and and he did genuinely push her all the way to the line, they were well clear of Norden Dream Loper, um, suggests that he ran way beyond A, market expectation, and B, what he'd already previously done. Um, he also raced towards the near side as well. It was a huge advantage to race down the tip of the arrowhead where Nanda Parada was, and, and Sacred went through that sort of uh, vapour trail, as it were, whereas Lancash was towards the right-hand side, and he, he didn't get any cover, and he had to row his own boat a little bit. So you kind of had to upgrade the performance of Lancash. Um, that was his first run for a little while now as well. Um, he hadn't run for 294 days. And if you cast your mind back as well, last year at this meeting, George, he finished second to New Mandate in the Flying Scotsman, a race which also was very hot on the time figures. It was so good that New Mandate went, went on to win next time out at Newmarket. One rule, I think, was favourite for the Dewhurst yeah. off memory, off yeah. the back of it. Um, and, and there's been loads of horses out of that race at Frank the Form. So he's got Doncaster form. He's a dead seven furlong specialist. He should come on for the first run. His time figures are absolutely off the chart. Um, and he should really, all, to all intents and purposes, get this race to run to suit because you've got Dubai and... Um, uh, Dania likely to to make the running. I think they'll probably go forward again with Dania, won't they? Because they made the running with him last time at Ascot, mm-hmm. and those tactics work worked. So yeah, um, other than the price, he, he <laughs> pretty much uh, fills all the criteria you're looking at um, with regards to solid bet. Would you would you still be happy to 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 back him at thirteen to eight as it stands? It's just Is about yeah, just yeah. about. It, it, it's verging on. When it comes to Saturdays, um, and I've got a choice of five or six, I tend to scrap the ones that are two to one and under and go for slightly bigger prices. That's that's my mindset. If this was a normal week, meet, um, midweek <clears throat> meet, meeting, and I'd only really got a couple of choices, I'd, I'd probably I'd probably stick him in um, and, and say yeah, I'd, I'd focus on the better quality rather than spread my net a little bit further wide like you can on, on a week weekend. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he, he's, a, he's a very good horse land question and the time figures suggest that as well. Yeah, that one bad run, of course, coming on heavy ground. No concerns there uh, ahead of Saturday. 13 to 8, pretty much across the board at the moment for Lancash. Uh, on to the big one of the day, the Kazoo St. Ledger Stakes and Hurricane Lane is the 8 to 11. Odds on favourite here. That's with Bet Victor Bet Fred and Bowl Sports, uh, Ottoman Empire seven to one, Mojo Star fifteen to two, High Definition eight to one, Interpretation fourteen, Salukan twenties, The Mediterranean twenty five to one, thirty three to one, Youth Spirit, Fernando Vici fifty to one, along with Scope, who's also fifty to one, Ten Run, this time a nice looking each way angle to this race for my untrained eye, Andy, but I guess we've got to start with the favourite Hurricane Lane at eight to eleven. Yeah, a great each way betting race. If only I could see the favourite getting beat. Um, yeah. <laughs> sometimes there is the short ones that you think, well, oh, I want to take this on because there's a, uh, an air of vulnerability attached to it. The form's a bit brittle. The ground's not quite right. The trip's wrong. The yard's out of form. But it's just really difficult to see Hurricane Lane, if he rolls up, rocks up here and brings his A game to the table, he, he'd, be, he'd be just... Way too good for this lot. He's proven that already, hasn't he, this season? You know, he's winning the Irish Derby. was spectacular. Considering how far back he was at halfway when he ran down Lone Eagle. He then went to France last time out and, and bolted up. His only blip on his dance card, and it's not a huge one, was when he was third in the Derby. But he didn't really handle the track. He lost two shoes as well that day. Two front yeah. shoes, which uh, obviously is a little bit of a, 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 a of an issue. Um, but look, he's a strong stayer. He looks as though he'll get the mile six, no problem, given how hard he's hit the line. Can't really see in the ground being too much of a problem. I think an idea where he'd like a little bit of ease in the ground. I think he's been better when there's been a bit of juice. So genuine good to firm ground has to be the only concern you could offer. 
And, and just Charlie Appleby this season has just been mopping these races up left, right and centre. Ain't no bronze hardly had a look in other than St. Mark's Basilica, but he's had to ply his trade over a mile, mile and a quarter. But mile and a half in and around that distance, you'd be, uh, uh, obviously, Adiar winning the Derby, winning the King George and Hurricane Lane have just uh, made it a, a season to remember for the boys in blue and Godolphin. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm finding it hard to look for a, a betting angle in this race because um, I do think the favourite will genuinely win. I, I, I'd be surprised if he doesn't. Um, will I have a bet in the race? I'd probably flip this race on his head, George, like I do sometimes and think, well, OK, come on, what, what am I going to offer the, the viewers in as, as an alternative rather than sticking up an 8-11 to 11 shot? So it's got to be yeah. without the favourite market. So... I don't think there's too many firms betting without the favourite at this very moment in time, oh, yeah. is there? We've got, we've got Novi Bet to have, have a market out uh, with some quite interesting prices. Um, okay. In terms of interesting, I'm saying they're not your standard prices. Ottoman Empire, 57 to 20, which I think nice. is you know, just shy of 3 to 1. Yeah. Uh, Mojo Star, 31 to 10, so just a touch over 3 to 1. High Definition, 67 to 20. I mean, that is just a touch under 7 or 2. Uh, Salukan and Interpretation, both 7 to 1. The Mediterranean, 8 to 1. Uh, Youth Spirit, 51 to 4. I mean, this is remarkable stuff. 12 to 1, that is. Yeah. Um, 20, 20 to 1 and 25 to 1, the last two. So that is a very early market from them. Um, okay. I, I, but it's indicative, I guess, of, of where we're looking at it being when the other firms open up. OK, well, uh, what, what I'll probably, probably do then is half semi guess what what i think might happen with the without the favorite markets and, and look at it objectively and think okay that's value that isn't value i, I, I think ottoman empire we're, we're quite happy to say he'll be pretty much cast iron favorite in that without the favorite market i can't see him yeah. drifting too much you know he's, he's forming the good in, in the gordon stakes he's, he's fairly solid he, he looked a, a genuine type that that would improve again that's been his trajectory path all seasons and he's, he's improved from finishing uh, an eye catching six on his debut at Dundalk, all the way through the ranks, and um, you know the odds in great form. Johnny murty has been doing really well in the last uh, month or two, particularly with his, his raiders over the Irish Sea. I, I'm, I've, I've lost faith with High Definition. I think High Definition is one of those horses that is very much priced up on reputation rather than actually what he's done this season. I think that's safe to say. Uh, he was disappointing in the Derby, disappointing even more so. Sorry, in the Irish Derby. And I didn't think he really showed that much at York last time out. Cheap pieces mm-hmm. on for the first time. They might induce a little bit of improvement. I think it's really very significant which one Ryan Moore arrived. Does he go, does he stay loyal to high division definition and say, well, I'll give you one more chance, lad? Or does he go with the unexposed interpretation who's on the improve? Does he go with Salukan who chased home Ottoman Empire? Emperor at Good at Goodwood and, and was doing his best work at the end? Or does he go the Mediterranean who beat? High definition, uh, fair and square on the Naismire. I think it's going to be uh, interesting, like I say, to see which way Ryan Moore goes there. Um, the going market back will at, probably react to that, though, won't, won't it? will react well. to that. If he doesn't yeah. write high definition, I think high definition will be, might even be second favourite, but I think he'll be a full second favourite. Um, yeah. And I do think that without the favourite market looks a little bit skewed. Mojo Star got well beaten um, when, he, when he ran against Hurricane Lane. He won a three runner race at 20 on last time out, but Going back to last year, and this is a little bit of a pot shot, but Scope beat him last year, beat at Mojo Star at Newbury on heavy ground. And he looked a very strong stayer that day. And, and Rafe Beckett has kind of always had him in high regard. He started off the season by finishing second in the novice event at, at Newmarket. He then got beat by Adio in third realm in, in what was the, ended up being the preeminent trial at Lingford in their Derby trial in May. Yeah. And then I don't know what went wrong with him or why he didn't run afterwards. I can't remember what he's, why he didn't make the derby or, or what went on, like I say, in between. But he was off the track for 102 days when he went to the Naismar the other day for the Great Voltage. Yeah. And I thought he ran a race chock full of promise. Um, he, he was dangerous three out. He then got a little bit outpaced between the three and the one and looked like he was struggling. But then once they, inside the last 100 yards, he was hitting the line strong, strong again. He hasn't got that much to find with the likes of um, Salukan and the Mediterranean and you Spear on that run. You could literally throw a blanket over him at the finish. But because he's had less racing this season, I think he's been geared up for the St. Andrew. He looks at out and out stay as far as I could see. Mm. 
he could be the one that could easily be the joker in the pack. Um, he's 50 to 1 at the moment with all the, all the runners in. But if we could get something in around the 20, 25 to 1 mark come Saturday without the favourite and back him each way, I'd be, I actually would be slightly disappointed if he didn't finish in the first four because that's what we're thinking. Hurricane Lane, will, unless he does something disastrous, he's got to be either the winner or be in the first three. So basically, you're, 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 getting, you're getting four places for scope and there is scope for him to finish second. Very good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I, like I say, I don't think there's anything cast iron about Ottoman Empire, Mojo Star or High Definition and all those three ahead of him in the market. And as I said, he hasn't got too much to find with the likes of Saluk and the Mediterranean and New Spirit. Um, so I think that, 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 that great voltage is likely to throw up the, the obvious one he'll chase home Hurricane Lane. And I'm hoping it could be Scope. Scope, the outsider of the lot in that Novi bet without the favourite market, 25 to 1. And uh, so keep an eye on those as other firms do come out. It shouldn't be too long. And as Andy says, 50 to 1 uh, to win the thing as well. If you want to take a chance on on something going wrong with Hurricane Lane, the the pretty uh, bulletproof favourite at the top of the market at 8 to 11. Those are the four races that we were going to cover in detail. Plenty to get stuck into there. But Andy, any others? You know, we've got the, the nursery first up, a couple of handicaps. To, to end the day anything in those that you want to flag up now um we've got prices in uh, in the last in the uh the verm in the vermintier um we've got prices from hills but anything you want to flag up in those in those last races i think i think the horse of roger varians will take a bit of beating in the in the 405 um i presume he'll be favorite title um he, he's the only three-year-old in the race which straight away leans me towards him Three year olds against the older horse at this time of year is he's always um an angle that I think he's um one that has proven to be quite fruitful over the last sort of decade or so. Mm. Um and he's been gelded since his last run. Um if you if you look at his overall form as well, I mean he, he was he was a good third behind um Alan Carr, wasn't he, at Royal Ascot? Um off the back of a good win at Yarmouth and a good time figure. Um He's he's a bit tricky because he's had the blinkers on and they've gelded him. So they're obviously the odd quirk, but I think this track will really suit him. Um, so he'd be not one I'm necessarily looking to back. So I think it'd be a short one, but I think if for anyone who's analysing the card and looking for a short price favour that he's the most likely winner for them on a Saturday, then he he he's definitely one. And in the final race, um, I'd be prepared to. Overlook, let's say, the run of Royal Fleet last time out. I, I had a good go at that race that he was fifth in at York on the basis because he was favourite that I wanted to take him on. He was drawn 17 of 17 and he's quite a keen going going type. And predictably, he didn't give himself any chance at all because he took a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a grip early on from that wide draw. He couldn't get in. He couldn't get any cover. Actually upgraded his run. He finished a respectable fifth uh, and he got beat three lengths by Rifleman. Um, but I think that form is really solid. The time figure is very good. I think Rifleman's very good. And I'd expect Royal Fleet um, in a straight track race where he can get plenty of cover like he did at Newmark. I think Newmark, it suits him a straight track. Mm. And, and I do think this track will play to his strengths because he likes to be buried in amongst runners. And from that draw, still seven with loads of pace on, you've got three or four front runners in this race. He, uh, William Buick could be able to chuck him in in amongst horses and, and getting to switch off. So I think we'll see the real uh, Royal Fleet turn up, um, as um, Eminem once famously said, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I think he said stand-up. Um, yeah. Uh, so so the, the real Royal Fleet is going to be standing up on yeah, Saturday the afternoon. The real Royal Fleet, please stand up, please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> four to one he is, uh, early prices there. That's with William Hill, the only firm who are out as it stands. They are four to one Royal Fleet in the last... Uh, thank you very much to Andy for sharing his thoughts on Saturday's Doncaster card. We're going to be joined tomorrow by Tony Keenan as we go through the Irish St. Ledger um, card as well. So do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can find these podcasts on all podcast platforms as well. Do download the Odds Checker app for the best tipsters, the best free bets, bookie offers, place terms, and of course, the best prices as well. You can find Andy's three fancies for tomorrow's Doncaster card up on his column should be up at about 9am tomorrow morning so do find it there 
hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, this show hopefully plenty of winners in there some scope for some for some place money as well we'll see how that gets on uh, but please do make sure that you gamble responsibly and please do enjoy the racing